All right, then um, the Turner painting. Um, I think it's in Switzerland, this mountain. I was reading. Yeah, um, let's start with a sketch as usually. Um, you see this dark um, blue line that we can somehow call like maybe the horizontal line. That of course, in this case, there is not one line, there is kind of combination of different uh, colors, volumes, but more or less. And it's of course not, yeah, not the middle, maybe a bit more than one third of page. Yeah, and then also maybe not just in this middle part, I can draw this line because the rest we go also these white misty parts. And then of course the mountain shape. Yeah, also don't place it too high yeah, in proportions. So then we have enough space for the all this yellow light. And this. Uh, also by sketching, you can always, since you already experienced, so when you sketch, it's kind of in parallel, you analyze which areas are darker or where is the accent. Yes, and then you can straight away with the pencil kind of just just parallel putting a bit more um, push effect pencil, then you have the, yeah, so maybe something like this. So, yeah, so all, let's say this misty white splash on, on the right kind of middle right side. So also generally just kind of mark the contour the general shape. And then comes some lighter part of blue. Yes, and also the light. And then of course the light here on top of the mountain, this yellow one, so vertically should coincide with this reflection on, uh, on the water. And let's say if there, where reflection is, I can kind of mark it a bit, but on the sky, I will, I will not mark anything with a pencil. Yes, it's also not hard there. It's kind of this one lighter spot and then the rest around with the warmer yellow. But in water, I mark a bit because then anyway, when you do those colors in the water, you do them a bit more dark, so then the pencil shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Um, both corners with all these kind of boats, yeah, this brownie stuff. I suggest we do them really sketchy. So more like a spot and not getting into details. Yeah, we'll have enough work with mountain and making it all feeling yeah, this so this corner maybe just kind of noticing main uh, shades no. um, also very nice spot of light so the main spot on kind of in the middle of the light and then uh, here here left corner there are also like some light area and the reflection on the water. And the other side also has done a big blue spot with the bowls. And again, the, the red corner on the right side is also just, well, let's say we'll not put much attention. 
You can also notice there is a reflection of the mountain in the water. Yeah, so this one you can also lightly sketch the pencil. It's nice. It will be important not to forget. Yes. So the sketch, of course, is easy. Also, before moving, if you have somewhere the, the original front of you, also, before we continue to paint, do this exercise. Hopefully, close your eyes and look at the picture. And then at once, you see where are the the light areas where the, where the dark, let me see if phone works. Yeah, more or less it works here. Uh, this is the original. So I'm closing, I keep on closing my eyes. And now when it's already hopefully closed, then of course, what I see. Yes, man, huge, huge area of light in the sky. And then of course this spot on the water. And then of course, all the rest I see is a one big uh, darker spot. Yes, so even this foggy foggy part. Yes, yeah, since I, I continue half, halfly closing my eyes. Yes, and then it still it gets more together with the with the mountain. Yeah, of course it seems white, but when we progress in paint, you will see that. We will be uh, darkening and darkening lots of parts on the um, yes, on the water around. So even if they feel light, we'll be putting more gray. So the light in the water and the sky can shine. All the rest has to be lower intensity, and uh, this is kind of. Yeah, so imagine you're ready. Yeah, we sketch mm -hmm. course professionals. Um, all right, so no, no much to tell. Yes, I have two yellows. This middle light we can do with the lemon, yellow with white, those yellow around a bit warmer. And then, then we create some purplish pink for the mountain, some darker blue. To get darker blue, I can mix it also with brown, let's say, since we also have these brownish parts on, uh, yeah, on the mountain. And then if I mix red with brown, then I can probably get those corners. And I will also get from Sienna, yes, for this left side of the mountain. And then we will need gray to do these misty effects. Yeah, so it will be mainly, of course, white. And then let's see, either we take um, black or paints gray, or we experiment, yeah, with this misty, misty part. The only thing with doing uh, all this misty fog is that you do it when you're almost kind of done with your painting. And then, of course, it's a risk you <laughs> that don't work, and then your ninety percent of done work goes to um, <laughs> to the to an experiment um, folder. But what to do? Okay, then of course starting with light, starting with yellow, uh, till all our brushes are clean. I'll be putting, let's say, with a smaller maybe brush. And then I will have also dry brush to do the, the blending. Yes, kind of, it's always good to keep um, the bigger dry brush next to you. It helps a bit sometimes with the corners and, and the stuff. So lemon yellow. And lots of white. Yeah, so even... And, and yes, I'm, I'm not doing my brush too wet because then maybe I go just with one layer. Um, because if I do it wet, then I will not be able to cover 
all my page, let's say evenly. Then it means I will wait till it's dries and maybe go with the second layer. But then I will lose a little bit of, of this lightness. Uh, so if I manage to put all my yellow sky with, the, with one go and thin layer, so my paper, white paper kind of shines a bit through, it will give me more effect of the light. Huh? So also maybe try to, so I'm, I'm taking much, much more white, you know, yellow is strong. Yeah, so it's a really a tiny, tiny dot. Yeah. And and just here all around. Uh, you can start maybe not directly at the point of the mountain because there is like the lightest. So maybe start a bit on top, see how your yellow looks like. Yeah, if it's too yellowish, then you will just go, let's say, with, with leftovers on your brush and bunch of white, and then you can go directly and put this mix where the point of mountain is. And yeah? then it will be more, more white. Yeah, I imagine you see nothing at the moment because <laughs> I see nothing. Yeah, but it's very, very light. Um, yeah, and then I can kind of go around or even kind of cleaning my brush, you know, around. Let's say maybe I can skip those places where the warm yellow is because we will be putting it next. Yeah, we see also some nice peachy, pinky colors there at the more at the bottom, closer to, to the mountain. Yeah. Also very nice um, spot of this light. So there it comes this in the corner in the peak of the mountain comes this light. And then also one line here on the right kind of already. Yeah. So also I cover this area and we'll be saving it from warm yellow. Yeah. So then it creates a nice Yeah, so all clean, all. All right, now then I take the warm yellow and, and we can see, yeah, we can put it first and then I think we will need a bit of pink as well. And even maybe this, um, where is my, this nipples, uh, the nipples one or, you know, this is typical. It's also kind of the, one of the popular, the ones you buy extra. Yes, again, if I take pure yellow medium, it might be too light, too bright. I can try calm it down both. Also maybe with the, my lemon. Yellow, no, it won't work. So still some white I will need. Yeah, but already a bit more bright and a bit more warmer. Yes, and again, my brush is dry, enough paint. And also start with some area you feel safe. So maybe not again, not directly at the borders of the mountain, but somewhere the sky. Yeah, see if you can like, uh, if it works for you to, to blend out the borders. Um, yeah, and my, and my movements are a bit circular. I kind of, I put the paint and a bit roundy. Let's say it's also a bit maybe preparation to our Misty effect. This is how you kind of apply. Yeah, so it should look should look beautiful. The mountain mix. And also the other side. Yeah, 
Yes, for example, now I put my paint and I have some emptinesses in between. And in this moment, I can actually move my brush a little bit to the water. Yes, but either I still take some excess of water yeah, on uh, from the touching the, the cup, or I also clean a bit my um, on the, with the napkin. So it's wet, but not really wet. But then, and then I can spread a bit. Yes. So this feeling of how wet your brush is. If somewhere is needed, you just I just take pure white on my brush and I go on top directly on my paper on top of the yellow. Let's say maybe yeah, some parts you did too yellowish here. Yeah, so that's why, of course, the white is the one we use. Yeah, it can also help to, to blend the borders, let's say, if, if um, you struggle to get the borders nicely. And it also helps to. And let's go with the, uh, with this pinky. Because actually all, all the border is the mountain is very nicely shiny pinky. Um, Depends. Okay, I will try. You can try both. Um, so mixing some pink with yellow. You remember it gives a very nice, um, nice mix. Yeah, this warm, richer color. If needed, again, also we can add white, so it's more pale. Yes, and then we have it in some sky parts. Yes, and somewhere it looks a bit more dark, somewhere it looks a bit more, uh, a bit more pale. Here on the left side a bit more, looks a bit more pinky. Yes, and don't be scared, you can get on top of your mountain. Yes, uh, with, with the... It will not do bad, it will be good because then with some purple on top. So of course now it all looks very light, very pale, but you remember the light starts shining once we put together shadow and light. Yeah, Once we put the dark mountain, all the sky will start shining. I will experiment a bit more with the darker pink. So already maybe also maybe because I see it's a bit also like a bit outline of the mountain with this bit darker pink and mix it and mix it um, still some white and then I take maybe a bit smaller brush and from the side of the mountain I can kind of maybe create a bit of outline with this pinky. Yeah, also maybe not everywhere. So some areas. Um, yeah, and then also actually the mountain itself. I can put already also some pinky touches. Um, 
Yes, also, for example, let's say if I somewhere I put this pinky touches as a background of the mountain, yeah, but this moment maybe I put too, too intense, still a bit more misty, 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 like pale. Don't be lazy, clean your brush if you feel, you know, you have too much paint and then um, you're trying to get white, yeah, so then just stop, take off the excess of paint and continue with the um, up to this, I actually suggest we start with this dark blue at the bottom. And then we will be kind of filling in between um, some bluish dots on the mountain. And then we go with the purple for the mountain. I think this could be kind of maybe easier rather than taking now purple. And going down, yeah, both can be actually. Um, it's maybe not to, to get too too dark. Yeah, no, let's let's go better with the pale purpley. So then our brush is not getting too too dirty because this blue, you will have to be careful. Yes, it's it's really sticky, really. Um, yeah, you need either have like let's say separate brush for the blue and then just don't use this brush for some some others yeah okay so mixing purple like with whichever way you get your purple if you have it ready or you like mixing yeah and then choose you remember depends on blue the bits depends on red or pink and then of course for this misty one we need the pale so this will be lots of white yeah so um i mix yeah so i will have like one purple mix and then just with the leftovers or like what i have on my brush i can go to to white so even i'm not kind of putting white inside my purple mix but just like what I have on my brush, I grab some white yeah, and this already enough amount of purple. Yeah, still even a bit too much, but yeah. And then I started working some purplish on my mountain, see how, how they look. Yeah, I feel maybe um, too light, too dark. Um, yeah, um, of course we will be working. Again, maybe I have too much paint on my brush, then I just clean it with a um, paper towel. And then already with the brush that has less paint, I can kind of continue spreading. Yeah? So let's say I've put some, um, I've put some color on my paper, and then I feel that for this area, it might be too much. I take off paint from my brush and then can be spreading. Yes, and then of course you can play around with them. There is purple more towards um, like lila or the purple more towards uh, pink or towards blue. So uh, this is. And don't try to get your mountain perfect now from the first uh, from the first go. Yeah, of course we see it. Colors 
like as close as um, it feels or possible, but you'll be kind of going back and back again. And yes, of course, not making it too tired. You know, sometimes you can, that's the way you say when you kind of, you've been cruising around one spot too much and it's already kind of you made it too dark, then you try to make it light. Then you again go with, and then um, yeah, and I see a bit more bluish already going at the bottom uh, of, of the uh, painting. And I'm okay, so I'm okay also now leaving some empty paper spots in between the mountain. Yeah, like I see some colors. So here I see some violet, here I see some bluish spots. And then like the emptiness is in between. Then I can blend either with a little bit wet brush. Yeah, so, so use it, use, it, use this feeling of um, how wet is your brush, how much Something, something like this. Yes, also if you move too much in one place, sometimes you feel the brush starts taking off the paint. Then you remember our golden rule. That is, then stop. In this moment, just stop. Don't touch it anymore. Go to other side of the painting. Let it dry. And then once it's dry, then it's no problem to correct. Yes, the, the brush will not be taking paint anymore. Because sometimes it's like you move, move around and you kind of um, come back to the paper and, um, and you try to fill in this empty space, but it gets only worse and worse. And yeah, so. All right. Nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah, I will spread a bit more purple to the left side of painting. Here I can already go with a bit more waterish brush. So it looks a bit more transparent. That's where we have those white kind of splashes or not sure if it's... Um, Yeah, also some lines of purple, like on the back back. So I'm talking now about the right side. And yeah, some back, back lines of the mountain that are kind of getting in together with the sky. Yeah, so there I use pre, like, it's still not watery brush, but it has more water than the earlier and then my paint goes more transparent there. Yes, or I can also sit um, a stroke of paint. Then I go wash my brush and with the clean watery brush, I come back. Yes, also this connection with this purplish and already yellow part of sky. Then I put very watery purple. And I think I might want also sit some white in between. And like this, I will connect the, um, this purpley part of sky. Kind of, uh, oh. yeah. and then 
Yeah, so uh, blending, so avoiding this border here works very nicely, just putting yellow on top and it works like this fog and connects the two colors. Okay. On the right side, a bit similar. Yes, it looks a bit more darker there, maybe a bit more darker pinky, a bit more darker purple. Oh, a bit too much dark. Yeah, it's also good not to put the same. So let's say right side was a bit more pale. It's good we do this side a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Just different. Yeah, but don't stick to these areas too long. It's more like we are building up uh, to fill up the space. But I mean, if I zoom in or if I sit and look very detailed, there is so much details, a bit grayish, even a bit some greenish you can see and you can get crazy. Yeah? So still we try to kind of general. Now we, of course, we, as much as we can, we do some separation in colors, details, but um, Good, good, good. Um, I think I will go with Sienna first. Uh -huh. And then, um, yeah, yeah, so I'm still resisting for this dark blue. Um, let's take some Sienna. We have some corners. So this right, and no, sorry, left corner of the mountain. And yeah, and then maybe with, with also those bottom sides, then we can also use a chance to create some uh, base layer. And then later we can go and precise maybe with some details, those corners. So I'm putting, uh, I put, now all red, sienna, and brown. So then I can already go on playing with these three. Yeah, so here I'm gonna put, you can see. Yes, and first I will go with sienna mixed with the, with some white. Yes, and again, do as a base layer. So here, the corner. So it feels also kind of light there, but it's already not that yellow clean, yes, as in the sky, but it still feels as if there may be um, a valley or maybe also some town, some brown, and those browns are in light, yeah? Also in this corner is um, the bottom corners. They are dark, but there are a few strokes. Yes, just to show the shape that it's something like, um, so there are also some light areas and this will be our sienna mixed with white. So let me see here, here, here. Yeah, I'm not really guessing. I'm just kind of more or less the general shape of all this stuff in the corners. Yeah, it's, it's a bit too complicated to. So of course we can spot there is this dark boat. Yeah, and then let's say some wooden structures there. So I'm just kind of putting some spots and some, some vertical lines maybe. Yeah, and generally. OK. 
on the other side as well. Yes, the other side maybe not so much, but still we see this light sienna. So then later when we put dark, we can still have you know this little, it can be maybe in the end like a few millimeters, but um, and uh, before it's like really, really dry, I can take a bit more brown to make my sienna a bit more dark and then have some, yeah, a bit dark spots. So here on the mountain, Yes, be careful. If you have marked with pencil, where are those lights? You know, there is also this few strokes of light on the left, left corner. Yes, so if you have them defined, then be careful not to put brown on there, but leave white paper. Yeah, we will need. And then slowly with this brown, I can connect also in the mountain. We see some brownish there in this bottom part of mountain before the dark, dark blue. Something in between there, it's a bit purplish, brownish. Yeah, it's kind of maybe, I think it was like many layers. Yeah, here of course, these two. Yeah, so here I also work now with a bit more watery brush. I'm sitting just like the layer that can be covered. Yeah. I also see this a bit misty blue there. Somewhere. Yeah, also, for example, I noticed that like the way I paint this painting now, the way I move my brush, it's a bit more kind of the scratchy moving movement. And so if your paper is not that quality, then it's easy to get all the paper crumbles. So generally like the paper less than 200 or uh, so 200 it is in this gram and I think it's 110 in LB. That depends uh, where you buy the like which is marked. Yeah, but at least say it's minimum because then other way. All right. So no, I'm still resisting to do the, <laughs> the dark blue. I will go first with this. Very nicely, beautiful um, blue in between those uh, dark blue parts. So it's also kind of the part of light. So we have this dark blue bottom of the mountain, some light blue stripe and these dark bar, uh, parts of blue again. So maybe even ultramarine, I'll try maybe even this can work well. But in the end, you will see that you can't really make it also, it, it will not be so light, this blue. Um, so I will try even resist mixing this blue with white, even if it looks like a bit. I'll try to work first just with the, um, yeah, but if I, so with ultramarine, it's kind of tricky paint in itself. So in, in its structure, it's transparent. And then it's also very bright. So you kind of always want to calm down. Mm, maybe I can calm down with some leftovers of, of pink. But let me try. Yeah. Yeah, then I get, yeah, then I actually get this. It's it's more calm at once. Of course, you can use white. But as I said, somehow I have a feeling. Okay, so 
on the round. Yeah, the ultramarine in itself is a bit too. No, you can choose other blues you have. No, no need to go for ultramarine if you don't want to. It's yeah, much easier with acrylics than, than all pastels. I think it's probably really like there are things all pastels are good for some or of or just depends on practice of course. And, um so I'm putting already so I have some blue, it's unknown blue from some uh, color set that I bought. And um, so I first put it now, of course, it's not so dark as I need, but I kind of put it around also to connect in generally my mountain. And then where it's needed, I will place, um, I will place them this dark parts. Um, so in this moment, I, I'm, kind of separating my white lines. So in this light blue line that we were doing, then there is some, so this, yeah, and it's like vertically, I just separate them. And one side I see it's more bluish, the right side. And the other side is a bit more, Bit more brownish, like already the water. Yeah. So then, so those for those lines to appear, we just um, leave them. We leave them white for now, but later uh, we're gonna put some um, tone on top. But um, now we kind of color the spaces in in between them. So then we have those lines appear and then of course yeah, so there is also some bolt there yeah of course if you get some error and you say oops Lee you cover those little lines it happened to me now. I just go and sit some uh, white stroke of paint and I continue working. And then I give time for this white stroke to dry. Yeah. And then it will be easier to. Yeah, because we remember to correct. We need some first white. Okay, yeah, maybe we're already getting too much to too de detail, too detail. Have to just, yeah, and actually, maybe not sometimes not complicate too much, and actually could just cover all with the tone I want and then see those light stripes. Yeah. I put also a bit of blue here in between this corner of this, um, this reddish brownish part. Yeah, so there in between this emptiness, then it looks nice, then it looks the, this, uh, not transparent, but looking through that there is space there kind of, yeah. And of course, I'm not getting close yet to this white area on the on the water yeah let's let's build up a bit more around um like this we actually also will have more mixes already on our palette that we will probably be using for this water 
reflection, yes, this, this light area, because it's very, very tricky. It's yellow, gray, pink, um, yeah, bluish. So kind of let's let's move to it slowly. Yeah. A very nice mix. So it's also fun because then you mix paints and some sometimes accidentally you get nice mixes that uh, it's, uh, so for example, I get now here my blue with the uh, pink and I got really nice grayish color. Yeah, that can actually be my here this part of the of the water where it's like already a bit darker part where we see the reflection of the mountains over there. Yeah, but working, so all this area where is the water. I work really with watery brush, so sitting it all more in a transparent manner. And um, so then I kind of can slowly be built on top. Um, How it's going, guys? How's the challenging or easy or really, really, really challenging? Mm. Yeah. Um. What? What? Uh, what about you, Darren? Yeah, Darren's concentrated. That's good. Um, sit the colors as you can because anyway, we're gonna be later uniting and putting those transparent layers on top to unite, you know, the colors. Because of course here I see a bit purple, a bit blue and, and a bit um, brown. Yes, later I will go, let's say, and take some watery mix of some bluish or purplish and kind of go on top all of them. Um, and then there will be the layer of of the misty also, huh? if we survive till that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So of course, if you get till the right corner where we have blue and the boats, of course, like straight away, you can put a bit darker for the boats. As later, you might be putting more dark again. Yes, but... Um... Yes, I, I really got very nice this mix with this pink and the blue. Somehow it's uh, I get very nice grayish color. It's um, sometimes it happens, especially when I take those children paints so when I take gouache. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, Karen is getting the door, I guess. Yeah, so with this grayish, so I get kind of grayish pink or something or this. Yeah, and I can then go a bit here around the water. 
but my brush is really watery transparent. So I kind of, it keeps me on the safe side. Yes. And it's really working with the parallel with lots of colors. So in one moment I take pale um, grayish, but then I take a bit more intense blue and So here will be lots of putting one layer on top of the other. Yeah, so don't like, it's, it's, it's hard to get it from, I think it's also impossible. I doubt Turner himself got all the stuff, you know, from the first stroke. It's, it's really building, building on top. And I imagine the, his painting was in oil. So we imagine that then you have to wait Till it's all just drying and mm -hmm. so this water reflection i'm kind of getting step by step closer there to the light so i have i got some grayish blue here around and then i see some a bit brownish in there but also all very very watery just kind of yeah. and then i'm getting closer to this light yeah. but um, don't be scared because believe me all this water area around this line of light will be much much more darker like we put now, of course, in comparison to white that we have, it looks um, dark, but to make it light, we will be darkening it more and more. Yeah, and there is some yellow, so you can come back to my yellow leftovers. Maybe mix my yellow leftovers with some watery brown, and then I get my yellow a bit more kind of muddy. In here a bit, aha, uh -huh, here is his green color. I was wondering like, I was like, yeah, I see they're a bit green, but I was like lazy to, to get some green separate. I said, ah, okay, but now I'm putting yellow. Then here you go, it mixed it with my blue and here I got those greenish reflections on the left side above this corner. Yeah. So, so, so. Yes. So my drawing now is all really separated in pieces. Yeah, I'm kind of putting now these puzzle parts. Uh, and but then later uh, I will be combining in more in general in, in, in the bigger parts. But I'll be combining it with the second layer of liquidish transparent paint. So it will keep all my work that I did now, this um, here a bit this, here a bit purple, here a bit blue, here a bit green and so on. Yes, um, but then it will be more together. Mm -hmm. Yes, and anyway, I'm not rushing really to do the, this really dark uh, blue and okay, the, the brown, um, maybe. So it will be easy, it will be like really putting accents also in the end, you know, it's... Um, so I still take my time to work on, on all those misty combinations of different it's like to have a bit a bit patience to because yeah, of course one really wants to put all these main you know, parts once like at once but 
sometimes the patience is um, All right, all right. So, and the other corner. Yes, when I'm mixing red with brown, red is much more powerful. I really need a little tiny stroke uh, amount of red and I take brown uh, to have this nice brownie reddish mix. Yes, and now, so I did these few strokes of this brownish right in the corners and now the leftovers of my brush. Yes, because then I see some a bit of this also at the bottom of the water. It's a bit pinky purplish, but what I can do, I can, so this leftover of a brush, I just wash my brush, but it still has some paint on. Yeah, and then with this watery, I just kind of yeah, go in here and color. So yeah, it's, it's this use of amount of paint and amount of water and... Yeah. So, 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 okay, um, I will. So once I feel that more or less my area is covered, so I have played this puzzle game almost till the end, like till I have covered all my page. Now, then what I can, like what I will do, I will, uh, see those accents, those dark ones, they will help me, um, you know, get my painting into, into shape, yes, because then we will have already all those um, kind of main heroes. Here is the darkest, here is the lightest, or, you know? and then I will go back and go this uniting part of some, you know? So I will be mixing brown and and blue. I will avoid for now uh, black or paints gray. Um, so I will try to get dark enough with those. Just brown and blue. If it will want to be dark enough, then later in the end I can put on top those strokes of. Okay, no ultramarine is that. Yeah, the fatalo, the fatalo blue. That's the one I have. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Yeah, so I can do also, let's say, for example, yeah, you're not sure. I can take, let's say, my fatalo blue just the way it is from the. Um, from the tube, I put it, and then it will also serve me a little bit like, let's say second base layer, because then I will use some stroke, strokes of it as the, some areas and put on top then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, th there is this thin stripe between these blues. If you manage very nice, you can uh, show it, like leave it, but right later we will be anyway. Like also this stripe will be darkening. Yeah, so it is kind of the light inside the shadow. And you remember the lights inside inside the shadows are always tricky thing to 
manage because it has to kind of still have the differences um, be visible, but it cannot be lighter than. And then once again, so I'm using, let's say this blue, it's dark. And then when I have little on my brush, like little paint left on my brush before refilling, let's say again, I water a bit my brush and then with watery brush then I can go a bit around and then I have this color like transparent and then I can like work on some areas where maybe it Yes, so lots, lots of um, color combinations and so doesn't really maybe have to really fit in as perfect in those exact um, tones. Yes, in this case, maybe more important, your personal work looks looks nice. Yeah, it doesn't look dirty. Um, the colors match nicely. And, um, mm -hmm. Mm 
Yes, and then also I started darkening with some watery brown, this right side, yes, going towards to those, um, these boats on the, on the right side. And we see this a bit more, a bit more like around the boats, it's a bit more bluish or even purplish. Ah, bluish more, yeah. But again, I move, it's all, my brush is all watery. And um, move it as if, you know, like, like scratching. So. All right, something from Darren is coming up. All right, all right, let me see. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, Darren is way ahead. All right. Um, the water, this yellow on the water, I find, yeah, it should be done uh, to do this misty, to like make it more pale probably. Yes, I feel it's it kind of jumps a bit out. Yeah, it's also mixed with green. And this green also became very bright. Um, so let's say, I'm sure you already have on your palette like lots of stuff. So let's say I would take like just some watery, yeah, this grayish brown, like, yeah, some grayish and just let's say go, go on top and, um, but it's like transparent layer, yes, of, of and it keeps the colors and, 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 and. Um, yeah, Darren, so I don't know if you have time, you wait for me and then we go together, we unite the mountain. Yes, now it's cool. I see you did a great job of all these different colors. Yes, so now try to do the um, exercise of this halfway closing eyes and to make so the mountain. Yeah, so also maybe this um, light spot of pink that is behind the purple, maybe it's also a bit too bright. Yeah, maybe it also has to be a bit more misty grayish. And those three dots feels a little bit as if maybe it's um, um, kind of, if you look, I mean, the original, there is like a big dark shadow that's almost the same color as the boats. Yeah, and, um, but I mean, if the aim is not, the copy, it's okay, but maybe then a, a bit darker shadow to unite at least these two boats. Otherwise, it's look like three separate dots, a bit kind of one is not really sure what's what's it about. And very but very nice this corner, the right corner of, of the brown. Very cool. Yeah, you did you see the base brown and then the darker brown on top and then at once you have you have like really 3d feeling there with this corner that's cool yeah even in one mine it doesn't look like this and and what i would also maybe do clean my brush very well uh, in water wipe it with the paper towels and then go in white and so where the sky is where are your connections of this middle white yellowish and those warmer yeah so i can see so if you work with like lightly with white on top or yeah you can mix let's say um, very 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 light yellow but just go on top and it will help a bit remove those borders yeah uh, and, and uh, where the yellow meets the white yellow that's generally cool. Yeah, the, the light is really shining both on sky and the, and the sea, the water. Yeah, just as I said, this, this water around the light on the water, I would do a bit more calm. The colors are like a bit too bright. Yeah, the water is, is not really that bright. It's more, it's more grayish, yeah, but... Um... Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, okay. Darren is really, 
I should I should hurry. Maybe I'm talking too much. I need to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So see. Yeah. Trust me, I'm way behind you there, Evie. Uh, did you send also there on the WhatsApp something? Let me see. No, you didn't. Or, yeah. yeah, if you want Karen to send your um, like middle stage, yeah, like feel free, then we can, we can discuss. Yeah, but I'm also not even like Darren was sending, but I hope it doesn't mean he was he was sending just the middle stage to continue working, not to <laughs> do the final touch-ups and say, oh, okay, uh, see you next <laughs> Saturday. And <laughs> or I don't know what time is it actually wasn't following. Okay, a bit more dark blue for my bones, maybe a bit, but not too much. I don't know why I got a feeling here of something Japanese. <laughs> Those maybe like these water reflections. We should paint something Japanese. Yeah, those birds. What was the name of those typical birds uh, they like to? Chaffinches. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those usually in pair dancing, something like this. No idea why, why it turned down. It's funny how the brains are working. You know? Have some. All righty, all righty. Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah, so um, Darren, let me know if you send something that I should look. Yeah, and in case you, you feel like you finish, because I feel like I'll stay here for a bit more. I don't want to rush them. Because I like how it's turning out. A bit more gentle on, on some parts. Yes, for example, I still I will try probably. Yeah, I'm like this light on the water. I'm still covering it with a little bit of waterish gray. Yeah, it's um it will it will keep it will it will stay the the light you know but still i don't want it kind of too yeah, too white so i want it still to be a bit more misty 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 yeah. And again, so and I come back 
and to do this eye closing exercise. And let's say this, this area of, I don't know, this something white, like splashes or something in this closer to the right. Yeah. Like careful not to leave it too, too white. Yeah, it's like you can, but. Right, I will try the Misty exercise. So before uh, like, before Darren leaves and just also for curiosity. So I will mix some Misty purplish grayish color and with a dry brush, I'll try to unite my mountain. Maybe it will also work for uh, Darren to, yeah, so even maybe so left some leftovers of my so here's some purple what i will add to it maybe even let's see this some brown maybe yeah, it's kind of also nice one can work with with the leftovers no need to cool yeah so some purplish with brown and now i'll be getting some white but not too much yeah Okay, also careful not to get it just some, some dirty color, yeah, it should be. And then new napkin, let's work clean. Yeah, so if there are some excess of water, you can, yeah, just carefully wipe. I'll start somewhere in the middle because I see it's more dark there and And so yeah, I like I think I like it how it works. Yeah, so maybe not all around the mountain, maybe like this corner, maybe there will be better some a bit cleaner color. But this area that, that goes connecting to the to the blue, although I'll take a bit more. Here as well, Evie, are you sort of stabbing the uh, so, brush on the paper or okay? Yeah, um, so after so now I'm doing just <laughs> I couldn't resist, I just took some darker brown to connect here, but we will go now once again with this misty, misty stuff. Yeah, so okay, I'm finished here with the the brown yeah just i didn't want to have my blue line like too separate so i'm putting there a bit more brown mixed with blue so then it kind of goes into but okay so what i did here on my palette i have mixed um so i let's say i have mixed here some some purple and then i was adding just some here brownish so here i have some a bit misty uh, like purple with a bit of white and little, little bit of brown, not to make it uh, dirty, but to calm down the, the intensity. Yeah? So then still we kind of have, but maybe it can work also with the brow. So, and here I have my brush. I wipe it. So I don't really want it to be too wet. So it's filled with some paint, but I still do some light strokes on my, on my uh, towel. And then I go like round, um, but very lightly. I don't really uh, put my brush too hard. Like for example, now I find it comfortable. I hold it vertical, like perpendicular to the page. And I do like the round movements. And since it's the dry brush, yeah, it kind of, um, yeah, and then I can nicely also connect maybe a bit of this pinky on the back. So it looks a bit too separate. And now I can go and connect it with the... Um, yeah, so it works. It works when the base layer is dry and the upper brush is kind of more dry. Um, 
I mean, it's a bit similar as I was telling just earlier before when we put this liquidish layer on top, yeah? And then we change a bit the, the, the intensity. But with the dry brush, we can get exactly those misty corners, those borders, they will become, yeah? So now I took more wet brush. I take off some liquidy. Okay, I'm not, I'm letting dry this moment here where I forgot to wipe my brush and went in more wet. And um, try it, maybe don't try it in the middle of the mountain. Try it maybe in some of these uh, brownish corners, um, you know, how, how it feels, how it works. Uh, and then once you say, ah, oh, yeah, it's kind of actually nice. It, unites my mountain, makes it more pale. And I get those um, kind of misty, misty, misty. And yeah, and then one can also play around a bit with the, with the tone. Maybe here I take now a bit more blue and can do also a bit more bluish, maybe those Yeah, but I keep on doing this kind of circular movements. Yeah. And oh, cool, I like it, it works. Yeah. yeah, but be careful. If you move somewhere and it's too wet, like then don't, don't move too much, let it dry a bit and... Yeah, and in parallel, I keep on checking my painting. Yes, if I have somewhere some parts too light. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's. Yeah, you can also take cleaner color. Let's say I take now a bit more violet. And then maybe work a bit like with the same movements a bit yeah and violet on some parts of mountains yeah so let's say for example this misty part i would definitely work where you have your uh, pink part of the mountain yes where we have this light because it it's a bit like too contrasty yes if you have the original in front of your eyes you see like there is this contrast, like difference, but it's not that. Um, it's not that harsh. Oh yeah, hiring painting, isn't it? Lots of lots of work. Actually, it could be a very nice technique in generally to maybe work in. Then you kind of you do all the painting with these curvy movements, and then all your painting is kind of just misty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so again, the misty effect, the dry brush, curvy movements, and somehow the uniting.
Yes, can we do those misty parts also on the water actually? So where the, yes, if you feel it, say maybe your water is too into separate parts, then you can also choose uh, one or two or some colors that will help you unite a bit. So the same kind of misty, misty movements. Yeah, but also careful, don't get paper too too tired. Yeah, then too when it's kind of too. I think this technique like can be good, but can be also like the, should feel the limits. Yeah. Because that's what I feel now on my work. Yeah? I like I like the effect, but I see that. Maybe if you got to um, like adding some fresh yellow can also be good, you know, of course not, not too much, but it's maybe the bottom of the water or something. Well, in my case, because I actually didn't put it much in the first time, like Darren's one, I saw you had um, lots of yellow there from the first time. So maybe this is not because yeah, it, it actually didn't arrive to yellow but sometimes it's like it helps to save a bit when when the painting got a bit tired putting fresh colors fresh blue fresh yellow uh, can kind of lighten up a bit and get you back to the Thank you. <laughs> Karen, what you find difficult in this work? It's looking very muddy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I must also admit that almost all, all the painting I did with this tiny brush so it's kind of not sure if, um, yeah, but then it helped me kind of to to arm this puzzle, maybe more uh, detailed, maybe more, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know, the brush it depends. It's more, of course, the personal comfort, how, how you feel. Um, small brushes can also be doing you not a favor, yeah, but the opposite, because then you, you know, it's 
stick too much to this to these details and i'm using this brush mostly uh-huh okay yeah, it looks ah you like also the the um, not not the straight but uh the um, or is it it has a slide yeah, yeah, yeah. It? it has a slide interesting okay i i prefer the um, the straight uh, cut so i mean like where, where is my big, bigger brush so like like these ones yeah but like this is big this is just old and it's already becomes a bit curvy but like the ones hello hello should have been my internet that is doesn't want to work it's tired okay we're back so let's say, yeah, there is those brushes also with this slice, but probably depends. Yeah, it's just. It's I am. Um, I've only just realized I like working with them since I started working with you. Hmm. I've not discovered them before, and then I just stuck one day. I just picked one up and was like, oh, actually. Hmm. Well, maybe I should do the same. I was ignoring them for um, <laughs> for a while, and. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what time we are? I also think I'm doing a very slight, I'm doing a different version of the same painting, I think. Because mm -hmm. lots of the things you've said, I've gone, oh, that's not quite yeah. like mine. All but right, so I think from Just like another version, Evie. I think I'm slightly happy with it. I the yellows in the sea aren't quite so vivid, sort of thing, so hopefully I'll fair. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, this this uh, blue spot, I like it. It kind of fits more inside uh, the hole, but it's a bit too dark. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe just like really those grayish leftovers that you have on the palette, just put on top and then just calm down. Yeah. It's yeah. too brown um, for the water because it feels yeah. a bit like a rock in, in, yeah. in, in this case, but, uh, but generally cool. Yeah. It's. Um, uh, it has a very nice pinky light on the on the mountain. Yeah, feels fresh. And sorry, you broke up, Rivi. Oh, sorry. Is it? Yeah, I apologize. It says the internet is unstable. <laughs> sorry. Um, Are you very Evie? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You were saying, but, I think you were saying about the pink. You broke up a bit, but I think you were saying about the pinky bits on the top of the mountains. Okay, I've, then I've stopped there. Thanks. Uh, right. Yes, the, the pinky part is very good, very, very um, fresh and sunny. It's like mm. where my eyes, you know, are sticking. Yeah. And this is, of course, you know, we want the viewer to stick, you know, let's say to the main areas. Yeah, I even maybe will take your idea and maybe freshen up a bit my my pinky part because then i got a bit too too dirty and your one nicely fresh and yeah yeah oh. yeah a little bit so this line of the light on the water when it meets here the so here where, where it meets the blue yeah make maybe you can kind of just put the blue this on top just just this little piece i don't know why it's kind of then i feel there are splashes or something yeah 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 just kind of calm it down with the line of blue just connect those mm -hmm. both blue together yeah and then the light will go nicely down Otherwise, it feels like vertical splashes there. And oh, very nice actually. Those also accents of line of blue stroke. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. tiny moments, but look, it's fresh blue. It's clean, and it's already kind of here. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, those those little details. Cool, bro. Um, Darren, you. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Super. Yeah, it's seven thirty already. So, all right. I will 
do as you freshen up my mountain a bit. Yeah, so then also. Karen, do you want to share something with us or just the stage you are at? We, I mean, I know you, you need more time to finish. It's just general. Uh -huh. Right, let's compare the, the acrylics with the with my oils. Of course, so the misty feeling was much easier to get an acrylics. Yeah, the misty feeling in oil pastels, I think I've spent all, <laughs> all the, oh, okay, this is better, spent all the white chalk, you know, but the yeah, acrylics kind of easier probably. Or, because um, in the amount of time, I think it's more or less the same, one hour and something. Yeah. What you guys think? Yeah, acrylics looks nicer for this this, this work. Yeah, it's got a little bit of curvy, so it's just a little bit of shape. Yeah, the um acrylics is much yeah. Definitely prefer acrylics. Much better. Yeah. yeah, also this transparency parts of the water yeah, is yeah. easier with acrylics. Mm -hmm. And here, oh, it's, uh, yeah, well, it's experiment, you know, so. Yep. <laughs> as everything is always. Just a reminder, Evie, next week I'm not going to be here because I've got a wedding that I'm photographing. So, uh, ah, I will romantic. See you time. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, for you it will be uh, hard, yeah. you know, very tense because otherwise, then later, where are our pictures and e even more so it's actually a friend of mine so yes 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 well then happy wedding <laughs> yeah it should be nice so it should be good yeah cool yeah the summer is the the time for the celebration yeah, so a nice little church north on the north cornish coast and then it's, uh, she's actually a farmer. So it's actually back to her grandmother's uh, farm for a uh, mm. mm. afternoon and evening stuff uh, on the farm. Yeah. So should be fun. Cool. Okay, let's check the calendar then because I'll be also away for a few weekends. Then, so today 21st, you're not here, the 28th. That's right. And I will not be here then the one, the next, so it's june so the third the fourth i'll not be here uh, it means then we i see you then on 11th of i'm not here on the 11th oh. <laughs> i'm here I'll, I'll be here on the 11th but then me and mel will then be away for me for the two following weekends um, uh in actual fact weekend after that's gonna be most birthday is 7th of july but uh yeah, you know, the uh, 18th yeah. and 25th uh those are two weekends it's uh, me and mel are in South Africa, so uh, hopefully I'll get some uh, nice uh, subject matter for us. Uh, mm, yes, yes, yes. I'm summer. <laughs> excitingly waiting for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will. Okay, I will stop the recording since we're already chatting.